Since my talk is about storytelling, this is what I thought I'd just start with. I'm going to tell you a little story, namely the story of the little math angel Oho. The little math angel was really upset. He had decided to become not a regular angel, such as a garden angel or a Christmas angel. No, he had decided to become a math angel and now he got such a stupid name. Oho! Have you ever heard of that name? That little angel wasn't sure if that was a name at all. And now he was supposed to be his name all life long. Man, was he depressed. Well, best thing he could do, he flew down to earth to his lovely spot, which was at a stone at a little lake. He sat down there, wings hanging down, and man, was he depressed. But it didn't take very long when suddenly he heard a voice behind him. He turned around and he saw, sorry, <laughs> I just skipped doing this, he turned around and he looked into the ocean blue eyes of a very friendly bear. Who are you? He wanted to know. Well, the bear said, I am a bear, but I am a special bear because I can do magic. And in order to prove that he really could do magic, he changed the color of his eyes to all the colors the little angel was just thinking of. The little angel was very impressed. Well, now the bear wanted to know, and who are you? Well, said the math angel, I'm a math angel. What is this? The little angel <coughs> sighed. Again, somebody who did not know what a math angel was. You know math, he asked. Of course I do, the bear said. Well, then you know, for some people math is really difficult. And sometimes they sit there and think about a math problem and they just can't come up with a solution. And that's when we can help. We can fly to the people, sit down on their shoulder and whisper them an idea for the right solution. And you know, when they finally got it, when the click is coming, wow, this is something so great. And he smiled all over his face. So the bear was wondering, well, how come you are so depressed? Oh God, the angel sighed. You know, I just got my name today and it's so stupid. What's your name? Oh ho, <laughs> the bear started laughing. That little angel's name, oh ho, and he doesn't like that so. But the angel thought that wasn't funny at all because he was so depressed about that name. But the bear, being able to do magic, he whipped the name over the lake and he moved it forward and backward and upwards and downwards and all the ways he could think of and additionally he let it sink into the water. And it was just half into the water, the little angel got excited. Hey, stop, 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 have you seen that? What? The bear did it again in slow motion and the angel said, when it's right half into the water, you can read it as you have done nothing to it. Well, yeah, that's interesting, the bear said. Let's try it a different way. And he turned the word and put it again into the water. And when it was half into the water, you again could read it as you haven't done anything to it at all. Well, the bear said, maybe that's just coincidence. Let us try some other words. And so they did, but found out with other words it just didn't work the very same way. A little bit with a ha, but with this other only nonsense came out. Well, said the little bear, maybe Oho still is a special name. Yes, it is. They turned around and they saw a very, very old and wise turtle. And she said, you know, if you can do something, like you put the name into the water, and then you get exactly the very same thing you started with, then this is called symmetry. And your name, little angel, has two symmetry axes. And that, with names, is very, 
very rare. So the little angel got excited. Is there more to it? Please let me know. And the turtle said, yes, there's a lot more to it. And right now, because of time reasons, I have to switch my mode from going ahead on telling you the story and just giving you an overview of what happens next. Because, you know, the bear can do magic, so he can, you know, kind of put all rotations additionally and they found out that when rotation, rotating a hoe in all the three ways you can think of just after half rotation you could read the name again which doesn't work with the other ones and of course that's not still all of it that there is to symmetry the bear can do magic with a long, long oh ho 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 over the lake. And then, of course, you see that when you move <coughs> one O to another O, and it's an endless word, you still can't say that you have done something to it. So, of course, translation also belongs to symmetry. And the bear, liking to do rhymes, he sums it up and says, well, reflection, that is symmetry, but that's not all that there can be. Rotation is another hit, and that's still not all of it. Translation also has to be, all of that is symmetry. And they're all laughing, and in the end, of course, the little angel is so proud to have such a great symmetric mathematical name. Well, that's the little story about <coughs> the little mass angel Ho. And additionally, I want to tell you the story behind the story. So how did it happen that this story came alive? And well, maybe a couple of years ago, those who have been here, you have met Jürgen Richter Gebert as the maker of a hands-on math exhibition X Quadrat at the Technical University in Munich. He was talking about eye ornament, so I'm sure few of you or quite a few of you <laughs> will remember him. And so dealing with this mass exhibition and having pupils and pupils come and they were asking us, isn't there some material afterwards? And so we started thinking about it and I came up with the idea, well, we are used to talk about mathematics. Why not let math explain itself in terms of give mathematical objects a personification and let them tell about themselves, like I'm the cube and I can do th this and that and I'm related, for instance, to octahedron and so on. And by this idea I talked to colleagues and friends and I got to know about a teaching and learning technique which is called Sukistopedia and it was invented by Georgi Lozanov in the 1960s but it was only done for learning languages. I don't know if you have heard about it. The term Sukistopedia comes from suggestion to all learning senses in terms of offering learning material for all senses you can think of. It's uh, uh, discussed controversially, but I found it very interesting in order to, um, to, to try it. And um, for those who know, maybe just a reminder, uh, the Sugastopedic cycle has quite a few steps. I don't want to go into detail with this. I just want to point out the three main uh, parts of it, which is a very motivating learning environment where you can do lots of things. Then the main part of really um, put the knowledge to the listeners is to do it with a story done in dialogue form. And um, additionally, you do a lot of activities like games, but not with the idea of competition, but rather with the idea to have fun and to repeat what you've learned through the stories. So as I said, this was invented for learning languages and I did a skill enhancement on it because I was interested in it. And um, so I can say that I did at least one of the first, if not the first, mathematical suggestopedic cycle, of course, at the end of the skill enhancement, we all had to do something. So when you think, what can you tell about math? What would be an interesting story? Then you know that platonic solids are a very nice <laughs> subject to do so. Um, and so I did it this way, as I mentioned earlier, that um, really the, the cube and the octahedron and all these mathematical objects got to talk, got to talk with each other, got uh, to tell people what they are going to do. And since now this is a little joke for Germans or German speaking people, I don't know, have you heard about Meister Eder and his Pumuckl? Anybody in this room have heard about it? 
Okay, so you know the others won't, <laughs> but the hadrons, octahedron, and so on in Germany are called eders, octa eder, ecosa eder, and there's a story about a craftsman, Meister eder, Mr. Eder, and his little cobalt, and so I put the context in there for my very first story, but this is a figure well known, and I wanted to be free of publishers' rights in, you know, using my story and not being dependent on another person's character. And so that is uh, how my own figure, the little math angel, came alive. And in order to introduce him properly, I didn't want to start right away with the platonic solids. What I did is what you just got uh, to hear is the story about symmetry and the little angel. And then the second story was about platonic solids. And now maybe you wonder how does it work? Do I sit there and read the story to pupils? But according to the psychostopedic cycle, there's a lot of action going on and I just brought you some pictures. Um, so I have been there with kindergarten kids and you see me there uh, reading the story but you also see here a lot of uh, action going on like you know boxes where you have to feel what platonic solid is in there or I'm sure you're all familiar with the twister game and I just did this with pictures of the platonic solids to get them moving, to get them used to the new material and of course they did their own things here. You can see this little girl so proud and here um, you see the a whole session with cards and names and children could you know check their own names on symmetry and do they have a special name as a whole or not and so um, I want to add this picture because before the little angel got those uh, pictures from Sonana Lutz that you'd have seen during my representation um, when there was first the story I got this picture and <laughs> from a little girl, so that was the very first math angel exi existing, she was painting it and if you take a close look there's a little string on it that the little angel of course can fly. Well, <laughs> that was the first part of uh, my talk and the second one, I also promised three more examples in my title, is about that you might think, well, you need to have writing skills to do a story like that or, you know, somehow some experience, but I had the chance to, to do myself an enhancement skill to kindergarten teachers and I was very lucky to be in the position that it was over one week and so I reserved one afternoon and I said, well, you go ahead and you write your own story. Oh, you can't do this, this is way too difficult, <laughs> no way, but I just said, take the afternoon, go out, try it and the very nice thing was they all came back smiling, happy, because they did write a story and they were happy with it about the numbers in the mirror castle and all different kinds of things. It was really neat. And now again you could say, okay, that's kindergarten teachers, but what about the normal human being? Well, even that is possible and these are the next coming up three examples. Students can also do this and at the Technic Technical University we have um, a program that it's called Mädchen machen Technik or if you translate it, Girls do Technics and we've modified it that way that it's a seminar for students and within the seminar those students prepare a summer holiday program for children aged 10 to 12, 12 to 14 or 14 to 16, you can pick an age group and it's four to six students preparing a program for 10 to 12 pupils and of course, uh, not of course, but it's set up for five days, so they have time a whole week for the program. And the contents, of course, it should be math with all senses. And so I told those students, are you, do you want to make a story or do you want to do it differently? And the students decided for three times they want to do a story and I just want to give a brief overview of those stories that came out of this seminar. The very first one was a case for Mathilda, exciting mass <coughs> mystery story for clever detectives. And well, what were the contents? Uh, the contents were a lost horse, a lot of suspects, of course cryptology and lots of other mass and uh, a real horse in the end. So those students were really creative. They managed to get contact to, to um, some pony hoof and then they really got a horse that the kids, the, the stolen pony was found in the end on campus. That was really great. <laughs> 
Then the second story was a fairy tale. It was called Number Castle Magic. I always put the German word below because there's some wording games in there, but you know, just maybe difficult to translate. And here are the contents. It was a fairy tale about the little fairy Alifea and the mean raven Nicknack, who kind of stolen all kinds of math, and the clever Tomcat Smartalek, who had seen all it, but he was only able to talk in riddles. And of course, the stolen wand, the girls had to find the wand again, you know, to re-invent re, um, or get the math back um, to the people. And the, the um, way it was done, you know, they learned math in those five days and then to finally solve the final riddle they had to use the math they've learned day by day. And then the last one that I have uh, did, it was more went like to a type of theater if you want to talk it that way. It was the magician mathematical treasure hunt and the actors were the little Epsilon, the magician Damien and Thales, Pythagoras, Fibonacci, Möbius, Laplace and Bernoulli. And of course the contents again were bewitched mathematics the magician, you know, had bewitched the math, and so all those great mathematicians kind of forgot what they have invented, <laughs> what they had found out, and together with the girls in the holiday program, they kind of remembered what it was all about. And again, here are some pictures that you have an idea how this um, was going on. As you can see, a lot of action. <laughs> and I would like to pound out here Pythagoras. <laughs> so those students were great too. I, just so you take pictures and I just have one wish, please don't take pictures of the pictures <laughs> because this is very private and I thought you want to see the faces laughing and so that would be very nice. Just can take pictures, everything just not from those pictures. Thank you very much. And I want to point out, of course, here the horse there was <laughs> the pony that was found after all. And as you can see, there was a lot of fun and action um, going on. As I said, during the day they were learning math and then they had to use it to solve all the different kinds of riddles in order to solve the case or to find the solution or to get the wand. And of course, all the girls were rewarded in the very end. Well, um, so I hope this maybe has a little bit convinced you that each and every one of you and us is a storyteller. And I think this might be a different approach to doing math, not uh, just you know showing things and doing things. This is very important, as you've seen, I think that too. But uh, maybe this is another idea of transporting math and maybe reaching young kids, older kids, adults that, that have lost a little bit contact to the subject as just being one possibility out of all. And so uh, maybe this is an invitation for you to, to do a bit more storytelling. And so thank you for listening to my story at this point. <laughs>